Odds and ends, the sauna is finished, so I thought I would give you a little bit of a walking tour to kind of wrap up this project. So this morning I built a step. I may build something better in the future, but I'm out of lumber at the moment. Uh, I installed the door and everything came together nicely. Uh, let me just show you really quickly. I've shown you pictures of this. This is the uh, hot water system, rainwater collection into the tote and I've actually got it plumbed for both cold and hot water using the propane heater. There's an on-off switch inside, so once you've turned it on, you can sauna and shower to your heart's content without having to go back outside. Uh, this is the cooling porch, and I've got to build one set of benches on this short side, but right now I've got this bench and table and I'm planning to put a small set of benches there. And this is the view from the cooling deck. Uh, there are some ducks down there swimming around. I'm not sure if any of our brook trout survived the heat wave, but um, we had some in there. So let's go inside and take a look. I mentioned I frosted the glass on the door. I left the bottom panel and the top panel uh, clear for light, but let me step inside and show you even with the frosted glass for privacy, there's plenty of light in here. So I'm probably going to end up frosting the top and the bottom. Uh, sorry for the cramped quarters. Uh, here's the shower stall. It's a 32 square inch, you know, 32 by 32. Um, as I mentioned, it's got hot and cold running water. You simply flip the switch on here. That activates the pump and the hot water uh, heater outside. And then obviously it's plumbed hot and cold, so you can do what you want there. Small bench for changing, uh, pegs overhead, and then into the sauna we go. Uh, you've all seen the door that I built. I did end up putting, these are simply screen door hinges um, so that the door will shut by itself. Uh, you don't want any kind of latching system inside the sauna because, well, once you get in here, it gets hot. Uh, you'll have to forgive the light. There's not a whole lot in here. I did light a little fire a few minutes ago just to give us some ambiance for the video. Uh, this is a Blackline 1600 sauna stove made in Finland, imported by all kinds of different companies. This one is Blackline, but you can find Harvika. There's, there's all kinds. Um, eight inches of clearance. I've double walled. This is cement board. This is actual fireboard with a steel liner. Uh, by doing that, the clearance normally would be 20 inches, but this gives you, actually I could have it closer. You can be five inches, but um, this gives me a, a nice uh, setting there. I did put a, a damper in the stovepipe to control the uh, heat. And I can tell you that that little stove in this small space is more than adequate. Um, so a couple of other notes I'd mentioned earlier. This wall is uh, six foot six. I can stand comfortably here. I'm six one. And then I just followed the inside contour of the shed roof. It's seven foot six in the far corner. And these are both backrests, but also it conceals. All I did is just poke the dryer vent outside in each corner. One here, one there, and brought the dryer vent tubing down here, and it opens up down here. What that'll do is as the heat is accumulating, it's sucking cold air from the cracks in the floor, which are intentional, into that, and it will really get the air circulating because it will start following the roof line. Uh, there are low benches, and they are 18 inches high. The high benches are 36 inches high, and so we really, with this one small design, got four different heat zones. Uh, lowest bench, lowest ceiling is going to be moderately warm. This will be the hot spot. It's both the um, highest bench and the lowest ceiling. So if your head is right there, you're going to be really sweating up a storm. Over here, low bench, high ceiling, relatively cool. And then, of course, if you move to the high bench, it'll be a little bit warmer. But you can basically just slide from side to side to change the temperature. 
uh, of what you're feeling without moving around too much. Uh, I did get a bucket for water and a ladle for steaming on the rocks. This is the timer that my son got me for my birthday. It's a 15 minute timer. Spin it around, the sand starts uh, dropping. And about 15 minutes is about the max of what you want. And then there's a thermometer. Of course, I just built the fire a few minutes ago, but it's uh, almost 85, 90 degrees in here with one handful of cedar ends. So that's it. Um, I can tell you that it's been a labor of love. It took approximately um, a month to build, being careful. I do have a little bit of finish work left on the outside. I'm going to trim the corners to cover the, uh, to cover the live edge siding. I'm going to just put another uh, inch and a half, two inch board there to cover up that gap. Uh, those are the dryer vents that I was telling you about. And I think we are probably going to paint the corner trim. Uh, and we might paint the door trim and the door frame as well. Um, but that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions about um, how I built it, well, I've posted enough pictures. You should be able to follow along. Footprint, the uh, sauna building itself is 8 foot 3 wide, uh, 11 feet long. Porch is 6 by 8 foot 3. Uh, changing room is 3 feet. Sauna is whatever's left, eight by seven, something like that. So there you have it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed watching the project. I've certainly enjoyed uh, building it and looking forward to um, trying it out sometime this weekend, I hope. Have a great day and happy Labor Day.